I started studying Russian when I was a junior at Horace Mann School in New York. The school had just added Russian to the curriculum after the Soviet Union launched its first satellite, Sputnik, in 1957. And I was one of a number of American students who began studying Russian at the time, hoping to become a great space scientist. Well, my encounter with high school physics was not very successful. I gave up my dream of becoming an astrophysicist and began reading Russian literature in translation. Uh, Dostoevsky and Tolstoy in particular. And that was how I began my attraction to Russian literature. Some of my favorite works are the novels by Tolstoy and Dostoevsky, War and Peace, Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy, and Crime and Punishment, Devils, and Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky. These novels seem to me to answer the questions, to engage in the questions that I was most interested in as a person. That is, for Tolstoy, questions about marriage, family, children, work, countryside, and for Dostoevsky, questions of faith. Is there a God or not? Is there a devil? Do you believe or not have faith? Those were the questions that bothered me as an individual, and I found them discussed by Russians in their novels. My translation of Brothers Karamazov is about to be published in July, this July, and I decided to undertake the project because there were really only two versions available. One of them was by Constance Garnett, who was indefatigable and who translated all sorts of things into Russian, and her translation is a bit archaic and obsolete, but still serviceable. And the other one was the translation by the team of Pavel Volochonsky whose translation <clears throat> I find too literal. And therefore, I decided that I could do better than both of those. And Norton Publishers commissioned the translation. It's a, it's a long process to translate. I do a rough draft uh, on the computer. I read through the translation entirely. Then I give it to a native speaker of Russian, a former teacher of Russian at Middlebury College, who compares the Russian and the English together and makes all sorts of suggestions, changes, corrections in my translation. Then I revise the draft, read the whole thing through, send it off to the publisher. The publisher sends it out to readers to see if it is appropriate for them to publish. If the readers have suggestions, those come back to me, and I revise the draft one more time. Then if it's acceptable, it goes to the copy editor at the publishers, and the copy editor makes all sorts of changes and corrections. Comes back to me. I then revise it one more time, send it in to the publisher. They send it to be printed. So it is, and then there's the proofreading of the text when it comes back. So I read it, say, six times before it's finally approved and gets published. 
and takes the form that I showed you, which I think has a terrific cover designed by their art department and conveys the essence of what I think the novel is about. Dostoevsky's voice is difficult to capture in English prose. The way I attempt to do it is by listening to the characters in my head. Each character speaks in his or her own way, and as I'm sitting and typing out the, my first draft, I hear the characters discussing uh, in my head. And that's the way that I try to capture their voices. The word is idiolect. Each character has his or her own idiolect, way of speaking. There are some particular challenges in translating Brothers Karamazov. The foremost one is that Father Zosima, in Book 6, writes his own life and Alyosha tells about his life and his sermons, quotes his sermons at length. And those sermons are almost all in a mixture of Russian and Church Slavic. Church Slavic is to the Russian Orthodox Church what Latin is to the Catholic Church, or was to the Catholic Church. So one needs to know Old, old Church Slavic in order to do justice to Father Zosima's sermons. The question of idioms is an interesting one. I'm very lucky to have available a wonderful dictionary of Russian English idioms. Uh, I couldn't do without this, especially when Fyodor Karamazov, the father, speaks. He's using very colorful language, and I have to translate his proverbs, especially which are difficult, into English equivalents. Uh, an example which doesn't come from the novel is um, a Russian proverb which says, Yesh borsh z gribami, a yezik derzhi za zubami, which literally translated means, eat your borsh with mushrooms, but keep your tongue behind your teeth. Well, what does that mean? What's the equivalent in English? The equivalent is discretion is the better part of valor. Or to be rude, keep your big mouth shut. Um, so using dictionaries of sayings, proverbs, um, all sorts of... I have every dictionary Russian English dictionary known to man, plus there are online references. I also have the native speaker whom I use and to consult when I have a problem. And if all else fails, if she can't answer the question, there's a listserv of Slavic teachers of Russian literature, culture, history, and I post a message on the listserv say, dear colleagues, I'm having trouble with this phrase from Crime and Punishment or from Brothers Karamazov. Can you help me with it? Um, if I could ask Dostoevsky one question, I would ask him if he really intended to write a sequel to the book. There's an indication in the preface to the Brothers Karamazov that he is contemplating having Alyosha grow into the hero of a future novel. Well, that's an interesting question, but there is no evidence 
indicating that he was ever going to do it. Mm -hmm. 